Hello there. Andy Danziger is a retired pilot with decades of professional flying experience, including jetting none other than then-Senator Barack Obama between campaign stops in 2008 when he was running for president. And he says UFOs are real. But how does he know? Because he's a pilot and he's seen one and he joins me now. Andy Danziger, thank you so much for being here. So tell me about that night. It's April, it's 1989. You're the first officer on a regional airline flying from Kansas City to Waterloo, Iowa. What did you see in the sky? Unbelievable. Okay. Um, we took off from Kansas City, beautiful, clear night, mm -hmm. got up to cruise altitude, which is around 15,000 feet. Uh, for an hour and 10, hour and 15 minute flight. Wispy scattered clouds all around us at cruise altitude. A crescent moon visible Lovely. out the left side. Nice night. Uh, it's something really strange out this way. Mm -hmm. There was just what looked like a moon dimly visible mm -hmm. behind some of those thin wispy clouds. So a round red disc you nope. say white disc a white disc yep. you say so you see a white disc and you're like wait a second the moon's over there holy crap what is that wasn't quite that exciting yet okay. got more exciting okay then what happened um first we're trying to figure out remember we've been you see stuff in the sky all the time sure. and you can you learn to identify all kinds of bizarre things uh this thing is sitting here. We're looking for searchlights down on the ground. It immediately you could rule out the moon because the moon was a crescent and this was a full sure. thing. Uh, Forty minutes. We're flying. It's and just you see there. that thing yeah. just sitting there yeah. on the horizon. Yeah. How far away? Don't know. It's hard because there's no per real per depth perception. You know, it's just there's clouds. They look close. Yes. Uh, this thing looked close, but I couldn't tell you exactly how far okay. away it was. So 40 minutes, we're flying along, and we finally have to kind of get busy. We're talking about it the whole time. Mm -hmm. We finally have to get busy getting ready to descend into Waterloo. And uh, I'm heads down getting weather and talking to the company, telling them when we're going to get there. And the sure. captain's doing something else. And uh, when I look up, it was like, oh, my God. Then what and happened? That, that's not what we said. Okay. And, <laughs> um, both eyes on this thing, a gigantic red ball it's the only way i could describe it okay above the clouds it was big it took up almost half of the window mm -hmm. and uh it, we just are looking at it is it closer to you at that point i don't think so okay. but it was close but it I mean, changed it was, color and well shape. it was above the cloud now it okay. wasn't below the cloud it had been that whatever that white disc was apparently is what this and now it thing goes was. from a white disc to a red ball mm -hmm. and then disappeared into the clouds as we started descending it slowly started coming down mm -hmm. quarter of it hidden half of it hidden three quarters of it hidden mm -hmm. this happened over a minute half a minute mm -hmm. and the instant all of it was behind the clouds the clouds just started flashing on and off lights wow. like they were in always oh, unbelievable mm -hmm. just boom boom and boom. you reported this mm -hmm. And they, they told you well, to... Wait, wait, it gets better. We don't gets have that much better. time. I, okay. I, we, have to, it, we have to get through this, Andy. I'm dying over the thing, here. The lights are flashing, yeah. and you could see the clouds starting to pull apart into two. And the instant the thing got, you know, got thinner and thinner in the middle, the instant it was finished, the clouds separated as, as it pulled apart, mm -hmm. was all gone. So do you think that was a UFO? There's no question. Do you think it was an alien spacecraft? Probably. Do you believe in aliens? Look, there's... There's billions and billions of stars, trillions of planets. Yeah. Did you believe in them here. before you saw this? Yeah, probably. And did you yeah. have any experiences like this as a kid? Not really. Are you no. insane? No. Okay, if you could talk to the aliens right now, what would you say to them? Wish I could see them again. Really? It was so cool. Have you ever done anything? Have you ever gone out or put yourself in a position to see something like that again? How do you do that? I don't know. I don't either. Have you, have you been to alien conventions? Have you no. talked to some people? No. Because I know a guy. I mean, all I'm saying is maybe I can put you in touch with, uh, with some of these people. No, I've just lived my life, never saw anything again. But it was the most amazing thing I've ever seen Did in my entire life. Did it change you? No, but it was amazing. Yeah. It was amazing. Do you no longer fear death? I never feared death. See, there you go, Andy. That is, that is the, the key to life. Be open to new experiences. And, uh, you know, sometimes it's okay to not have an explanation for everything. Am I right? Yeah, that's for sure. You can't explain everything. And I, I, I'm glad we don't have an explanation for everything, but I am glad to hear that story. Thank you so much. Absolutely. For what it's worth, I totally believe in aliens. I do. Yeah. 
A strange object has been caught on video flying across the night sky in a squamalt. It happened earlier this week, and still the people who saw it don't know what it was. Sieges found in an attic may shed new light on the Roswell incident in 1947. Slides that were kept secret for a long, long time will now be revealed in Mexico. As we reported last night, Vancouver is the number one city in the country for UFO sightings. But that's just the beginning of our apparent fascination with tales from outer space. As Sinjin Alexander reports, some people claim their close encounters go much further. This is a little psychologically overwhelming. I am here to discuss the so-called flying saucers. So there's one question that has puzzled man for centuries. Are we alone? So are we alone? You believe in the existence of extraterrestrials. There are also visitors from other worlds coming to the Mid-South. Is that really true? If you believe that Earthlings are not alone in the universe, well, have we got a scoop for you? Well, if you're of the mindset that we are alone in the universe, we have some information that might change your opinion. Well, the truth is out there. The truth is now out there. Or is it? The truth is out there, or is it? Right, so, Josh, is the truth really out there? <sighs> way, way out there, Janet. The U.S. Air Force just released the files to a top-secret government program called the Project Blue Book. A Project Blue Book, that's what it's being called. It's called Project Blue Book. Project Blue Book. Project Blue Book was... It was called the Blue Book Project. They are the Blue Book files, a project based near Dayton, Ohio, between 1947...